In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to run a one-way ANOVA in SPSS. Now to demonstrate this, I'm going to use the research question, is there a difference in sales performance between the three types of sales training? To get started, you'll obviously want to have SPSS open. Once you have your data file open, you're going to go to Analyze, Compare Means, and then click on One Way ANOVA. Once you click on One Way ANOVA, you're going to get a screen that pops up just like this one. From here, what you'll want to do is put your grouping variable in the bottom box and then your dependent variable in the very top box. To do this, just select your grouping variable and click the bottom arrow, then select your dependent variable and click the top arrow. It doesn't matter which order you do this in. Once you have your screen looking just like this, you're going to want to select your post hoc. So click on post hoc. And then here, you only want to select one post hoc method. Now, if you remember, Bonferroni will provide the most amount of power, followed by Tukey, and then followed by Shafe. Now, even though you're asking SPSS for the post hoc analysis, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to interpret it. You need to make sure that the overall ANOVA is significant before you interpret it. However, it's a lot easier just to ask SPSS for the post hoc now instead of going back and rerunning the analysis. So for this example, I'm just going to go ahead and use Shafe. So I'm going to find Shafe, click on it, and then once I have my post hoc method selected, I'm going to click continue. After I click continue, it's going to bring me to the main one way ANOVA page. From here, you're going to want to select options because that's where we could get the homogeneity of variance test as well as the Welch correction just in case we need it. So to do this, go ahead and click on options. After you click on options, this box will pop up. And here, what I'm going to select is descriptive because it's going to provide all the descriptive statistics that we may need. And then what you're going to need to select is homogeneity of variance test because this is going to check the quality of a variance assumption through the Levine's test. And the last thing that you're going to want to select is Welch because you can use the Welch correction if the assumption of a quality of variance is violated. After you've selected all three of those options, you go ahead and click continue and then click OK so SPSS could run the one way ANOVA. And this is what your output's going to look like. Now, the first table is simply a descriptive table for all three of your groups. The second table is the Levine's test, which is assessing the assumption of equality of variance. Now, if you remember, we want this test to be not significant. However, in this example, the Levine's test is significant. And this indicates that the assumption of a quality of variance is not met. Now, we could use the Welch correction to fix this, which is further down in the output. So we're going to ignore the assumption of a quality of variance right now and pretend that the assumption of a quality of variance was met. So let's pretend that the p-value for the Levine's test was 0 0.089, so it's not significant. If the assumption of a quality of variance was met, you would look at the overall one-way ANOVA table, which is the third table in this output that I'm showing. So what you want to do is interpret the p-value in this table. And if you look, the p-value is 0 0.000. This suggests that there are differences in sales performance between the three types of sales training somewhere. However, we don't know where these differences are, so we have to interpret the post hoc analysis. Now, thinking back to the assumption of equality of variance, it was not met. 
So what that means is that we need to apply a Welch correction. So to find this, you're just going to scroll down and you'll find, it's the top box here, the Welch table. And here is the statistics that we would report for this one-way ANOVA. Because essentially what the Welch correction is doing is correcting for the fact that our variances are not equal. So thinking back to an independent sample t-test, applying the Welch correction is the same as looking at the bottom row in the independent sample t-test. At least conceptually, it's the same. So if we look at the p-value for the Welch correction, we can see that the ANOVA is still significant, even when using the Welch correction. Okay, so now that we've determined that the ANOVA is significant, we can interpret the post hoc analysis that I ran. And for this example, I used Shafe. However, Bonferroni and Tukey are also great options. So to get started, we're going to look at the very top row. And this row is comparing Sales Training Group 1 to Sales Training Group 2. So are there significant differences between group one and group two? And if we look at the p-value, we see that the p-value is 0 0.012. Thus, this suggests that there is a difference in performance between sales training group one and sales training group two. Now you're gonna do the same for the other two group combinations. So the next one is sales training group one versus sales training group three. And if we look at that p-value, it's 0 0.000. Thus, there are significant differences between sales training group one and sales training group three. Now, in the next section where it starts comparing group two to the other two groups, you don't have to look at the first row because we've already compared group one and group two together. So what you need to do is compare group two to group three. And if you look at that p-value, it's 0 0.220. Thus, there are not significant differences between group two and group three. Now the last section in this table, we don't even have to look at because what it's gonna do is compare group three to group one and then group three to group two. But we've already done this. So you just completely ignore the last row in every single post hoc test that you run. Now the last step in interpreting the one-way ANOVA results is to determine which group is doing better or worse, depending on how you want to look at it. So to do this, what you need to do is take your post hoc test results and compare them to the means. So based on the post hoc analysis results, we know that there are significant differences between group one and group two and group one and group three. Now, if we look at the means, the mean for group one is 63.58, the mean for group two is 73.57, and the mean for group three is 79.28. So if you notice the pattern, group one is performing worse compared to group two and group three. So a way that you can condense your results is to say, sales training group one perform significantly lower when compared to sales training group two and sales training group three. And that is how you run a one-way ANOVA. If you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment below. But if you're one of my students, just go ahead and email me or text me.